this is the Stronghold Podcast, episode number 32, I think. Uh, it's a rainy day outside. I'm here with the wifey. Charmaine, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm hanging in there. A lot of fights this weekend. A lot of things to talk about. Yes. Uh, I think there were like three fights this weekend. There was one, there was Bellator, and then there was the UFC. Almost too much shit to keep track of. So let's get right down into the fight breakdowns, okay? Because I think today they had the fights. The, the UFC was Angela Hill and uh, Karate Hottie, right? Yeah. Michelle Watterson. Watterson. Mm. You know what's interesting? I was thinking about this as I, as I uh, watched this fight this morning. I only saw the last round of it. But are there any other sports other than MMA where like two women can lead a card full of men and sell it? Is there any other sports like that? Mm, I don't think so. They don't make as much money as the men, though. No, it's not equal pay in tennis, I know that much. Mm. And then, um, I think the bigger question is, I was absolutely into that fight today. I only saw the last round, but I heard it was a really good fight. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was a brilliant fight. It was a classic five-round fight. The first two rounds, Hill was winning completely on top dominating the fight for the most part and then suddenly from out of nowhere um, third round Watson needs to take down Grant goes to the fight Hill's no longer so confident on the feet and Watson comes back in the comes back in the fourth round wins the fourth so then it's all open in the fifth and they just absolutely tear into one another for a blinding finish to the fight yeah the, well they were supposed to have a, another main event right uh, who, was, who was supposed to be the original main event on that card do you remember no, you no, could, no. maybe you could take a look but no. some, it's supposed to be somebody else on the card and then the card ended up getting pulled but you know I mean the, the UFC's card wasn't really that strong because uh, the main event ended up getting cancelled but uh, I mean Michelle Watterson you know it's interesting too like those ladies are getting up there like Michelle Watterson's a mom yeah. and then uh, Angela Hill I, Angela Hill I think she's like 35 or 36 oh, really? yeah they're both fucking jacked though did you see Michelle Watterson at the, at the weigh ins yeah. Dude, I mean, she's ripped. Can you bring up a picture of the karate hottie? I can. Half naked, please, if you're given, <laughs> given the choice. Yeah, man, she looked fucking ripped. And I think they're both, like, in their mid-30s and their moms. So they're just like... I'm sure she works out every day. Oh, yeah. I mean, of course, they're in a five-round fight. But you, if, you, if Jake can pull this shit up, it looks like they both look just ripped. Is this from this one? Uh, not quite sure. Sure, when that one's from, that was the least cut amount of times we could find that. Uh, okay, attaboy. Hey, that is the correct move. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, I thought the UFC's card was probably the one of the weakest. I thought the Bellator card was, was actually stronger. I heard that fight was good. I have to go back and finish it. And, you know, like with, with Angela Hill and, and Michelle Watterson, they're both just two contenders that have been right there, right? Because Angela Hill just lost to Claudia Gedalia, I think, in her most recent fight. Mm, I didn't and, see that one. You might need to pull that, that mic closer to you, Charmaine. I don't know. I can't. Oh, uh, okay. It's going to pull the Sorry, thing up. I, I'll push it this side. Okay, because this is quite far away. Um, uh, but, yeah, so, I mean, they're both, like, you know, they're both kind of at the later end of their career. They've both competed at the highest level but never really been able to break through to, like, championship level. And uh, But you can see that they're still, like, really, really good fights for them. And, uh, dude, the women's MMA, it's got to be the most... It's got to be the best female sport. I mean, tennis is like whatever. Like, I mean, is that as exciting as two women beating the shit out of each other? Like two moms just going in there and beating the shit out of each other? People don't like watching girls fight, though. Why? I don't know. It's just like, because it's not girly. <laughs> but, yeah, but... You know, some guys, I've heard, like Brendan Schaub said, don't want to see any chicks fight. Like, you don't want to see them beat the shit out of each other and, like, bruises and shit. How's it any different than the men? Yeah, not any different. It's not... A male dominated sport is, is you know, MMA. It's not mm. really female dominated. Yeah, but I mean, MMA is one of the few sports where women have been able to. Uh, to sh should we scoot that a little closer, Charmaine? I know you're, I'm afraid you're not getting picked up by that mic. Am I? Uh, Am I okay? Yeah, sc scoot a little closer and pull yeah. that thing toward you. I mean, I'm just like off center now. That's okay. Just pull it, pull it towards you. The okay. Yeah. Just pull it, pull it, pull it. It's okay. Uh, okay. It's okay. There we go. Um, but anyway, so yeah, I thought. I think it's good that MMA is the... I wonder if it's also because it's the most recent sport. Like, the, like no one gives... There's no women's football. There's women's basketball, but it's not nearly as Volleyball popular. You get women's tennis. Volleyball by females. Volleyball. But men play too. Men play. Ah, but females are better. Yeah, but the point is nobody likes volleyball. 
<laughs> Nobody likes volleyball. What the fuck? Yeah, I mean, there was true. even a point when Ronda Rousey was fighting where she was the most, most, high most paid, highest right? paid yeah. MMA fighter in the world, mm. which is crazy. I mean, there's no way that like a female boxer is going to get paid more than fucking Floyd Mayweather, right? Yeah. I mean, there's just no way. So that's pretty crazy, man. Like MMA is a really, really progressive sport. And when you have two women headlining a card full of like other male fighters, other female fighters, it's, it's pretty sweet to see. Uh, so, you know, kudos to both of them. We have uh, some really good cards coming up, but let's, let's get through the other ones. Uh, the Bellator card was pretty interesting. Did you, Jake, did you catch any of those? I saw um, the, the um, Phil Davis fight. Because they, I think they had, I think they had a card um, Friday night and Saturday night, which was bizarre because the dick kick was Friday, so I woke up and saw that Saturday morning if everyone saw that one. The double, double strike. Yeah, the Raymond Daniels double double spinning back kick to the dick. You know, did you see Raymond Daniels? C can you pull up the the highlight reel of Raymond Daniels where he hit that like 540 punch? What? If you type in Raymond Daniels 540 punch, he does you know like the Taekwondo 540 kick. Yeah, but how do you do he, a punch he, like that? He did. He just spun through like he takes a step, the shin comes high, he does a full 360, and then comes through with a punch and knocks the guy instead out instead of the kick. Yeah, instead of the kick, he did the punch. It's fucking crazy. He's probably got the best Taekwondo in MMA. So does it come all around like a hook or like straight up? He threw his in like a just like a right straight. Oh, so he straight. he jumps through, he spins around, and then he comes through and hits the straight, but knocked the dude out with it. Ray, Raymond Daniels is legit. He's a world champion kickboxer. He's fought all over the place but he's probably the best practitioner of taekwondo style strikes in mma and uh he's a beast but he <laughs> he fought this guy i don't know it was an mma fight right because he's but he's 40 years old too he's 40 years old doing these fucking flying kicks looks like a goddamn grandpa but uh anyway he did two brutal spinning back kick to this guy's balls like the first one he was down for like three or four minutes just wailing Arrgh! He sounded like a dying wildebeest or something after he got hit in the balls. And then, within like 10 seconds of the next round starting, boom, ate another one down like a fucking elephant again. Did, Did they it? deduct the points from the other guy that kicked They him? just didn't finish the fight. There's no contest. I don't know why he didn't disqualify him. Yeah. I mean, but whatever. The guy should have lost for those groin strikes. The terrifying part was, because it was no arena as well, you heard it. Yeah. Like, it yeah. Sounds, there's no crowd noise. So it's just, Oh. What does it sound like? Just pia. Just thud. Just thud. And then followed by... <laughs> did you find that 540 punch, Jake? Uh, I did, but I don't know if you can show it. it I think Instagram you can show. So oh, if, you, just a if, if you can of find it. it on Raymond Daniels' Instagram, I think you can show that. And uh, I know for a fact it was on his Instagram. It's like, it, I think uh, World Star Hip Hop shared it and like it went viral, the, this oh. knockout punch. Uh, so I want you to see this first, and then we'll go to the dick kicks. I'm making Jake do a lot of work over there. Jake's over there firing away on the mic. He's got three fucking laptops over there. He's got the switcher. He's changing between the camera angles, and he's doing the social media digging. And now Instagram saying, "Era, please wait a few minutes before you start again." <laughs> Ooh, they're onto us, man. They're yeah, they're they onto are. us. They heard you. Anyway, the yeah the Bellator fight. So the Raymond Daniels fight was there, and then Machida fought Phil Davis again in a rematch. Dude, that. It, Machida's, I think, 41, and you can see, hey, the age on him, he looked like he was pretty slow, mm. and Phil Davis looked jacked and huge, so it's just like, So you who know, won that one? Phil Davis won. Phil okay. Davis. He used to fight in the UFC, I don't know if you remember him, but he's a wrestler. Mm -mm. Fight was boring. They fought twice already, I think. I, th I think this was the second fight. How long fight. has Machida been fighting? I mean, he's 41. So, like, 20 years or what? <laughs> Probably something like that. He, I think he won the UFC championship. I mean, before John Jones was champion, Machida oh. was champion. Oh. Well, technically Shogun was, but so Machida won it from Rashad Evans, and then Shogun beat Machida, and then John Jones beat Shogun, and then John Jones has been the champion ever since. Mm. So like Bellator's got these kind of older fighters, these guys in their forties, these UFC guys who can't really compete there anymore, so they're trying to give them other fights. But uh, yeah, it was it was okay. I was pretty excited for the Raymond Daniels fight, so it was disappointing to see that. Come, but that's the thing. If you throw a spinning back kick and you're too tight, it tends to go right to the balls. <laughs> and I just, I just can't get his sound out of my head. Oh. I'm just like laying on the mat, just like moaning <laughs> over that. He was like screaming. Yeah. Like he was. So, oh, I think, uh, yeah, being male and having been hitting that over my body, the pain he must have been going through. Must have been he started like punching the mat and stuff afterward. Because the pain was so bad, but I mean, I mean can he, he was also <laughs> just disappointed because it happened immediately after oh, after he already took like a three minute break to, to rest, and then boom, they touch hands, they circle a little bit, boom, again, second one. 
Uh, so, Jake, do you at least have the dick kick for us if you can't find the, the punch? No. Uh, sorry, in my, my mic's just for some reason. Okay, his. Uh, Okay, so so me and Charmaine will just uh, we'll just chat until you, you sort everything out. But yeah, that was uh, that was pretty wild, man. Cause you've. I mean, what does it feel like? Getting kicked in the balls? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's like uh, you feel like you need to puke, or like. Sometimes you can feel like you need to puke. Sometimes it's like really, really crazy, like lower abdominal. Pain. But you go like this, right? You just. Yeah, cause it's like. A ball. Yeah, you go feel. So it's like a liver shot. Is it? No, it's not like a li- not like a liver shot. But what it can do is it like will will get you into a, like a fetal position and you feel like you can't you can't relax out of it. But especially with the the spinning attacks, man, you get so much force from one of those, and to get they two of them in twice. a row in like five minutes. <laughs> the full I mean, power shots. Yeah, to his balls. he was having a bad day because the way that he was moaning was was not good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's the sound. Every time, yeah, and I, I feel it bad too because I throw the spinning back kick a lot in training, and every time I throw it, I'm always afraid that I'm going to just crush somebody with it. Mm. But uh, yeah, man, Jake, are you okay? You having problems over there? He's okay. Just continue. did you see any of the fights? What, what, did we watch any recently? Mm. Only the last week's one. Right? Which one was? Which one was last week? Do you remember? Uh, it's a big black dude that used to take steroids. Is going to retire soon. Big black guy that used to take steroids. <laughs> Get him retired. Whoa, no, no, no. settle down, Charmaine. The only thing that she remembers about him is he's big and black. <laughs> he used to take steroids. He used to take steroids. OSP. Huh? OSP. 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 Pro, he fought last weekend. What a big black guy are you doing? <laughs> Overing. He's, yes, Overing. Overing. <laughs> he's not black, dude. He's not black? No. Well, he's, he's weird. He's, he's definitely not, black, dude. He's not black. Show us a picture of him. He's black. He's not fucking black. Is he not black? I mean, well, I mean, he's actually Dutch. But he's dark skin with. And he's How kind of, is he a Dutch? He's, yeah, and he's got, but he's got some weird like half fro thing going on with dark skin. I don't know what Overeem's deal is. It's kind of hard to say. But uh, yeah, oh that's right, he fought and he beat. Uh, he's definitely black. Oh, okay, exactly. <laughs> Zoom in on Overeem. Let's see if we can figure out what race he is. It's extremely confusing. <laughs> I don't know but anyways, the fight there. was it interesting? I didn't see that one. It was okay. I remember Overeem seeing like won the last against... round. Shit, who did he fight? <laughs> My brain is not working. Today, I'm sorry, I'm all over the place. Uh, okay, so you got managed to get everything sorted, Jake? Uh, yeah, yeah, we've got all the mics going. Uh, everything's going. I'm pressing a lot of buttons at <laughs> once. But yeah, all good. So can we find the Raymond Daniels either spinning punch or spinning kick to the dick? <laughs> and then we can figure out Alistair Overeem's extremely ambigu- amb- ambiguous, ambiguous fight. Uh, race. Ambiguous race? I wasn't even talking about that. I was just talking about... The big black dude. That's that big black guy. I thought you were talking about Derek Lewis, the black beast. Did he fight last week? Mm-mm. And then they had the, the, the one fights on as well, mm-hmm. which, uh, you know, one's kind of... The only fights that have been on is Muay Thai. Ah, that Brazilian girl that beat the uh, Stem. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah that, that was great. Man, that girl's fucking good. Stem's having a rough go. Hey, she lost two in a row. She lost both of her titles. Yeah. But that young Brazilian girl is really, really good. Classic Muay Thai. Mm. Um, it, yeah, that was... Alicia is the name. Oh, yeah, Alicia Rodriguez or something like that? I don't was know. Was it something like that? I don't know. I know her name's Alicia. Yeah, I mean, she, what, the crazy thing about her is she looked more like the Thai fighter than, than Stamp did. Really? Yeah, Stamp was trying to like throw her hands, throw a lot of combinations. She was kicking a lot too, but that Alicia girl, she was. I mean, like, that Brazilian girl like liter- like moved to Thailand. She just like stay- stays there. She trains there full time. So I'm, I'm guessing that's why she fights like a Thai. Yeah, but it was. I mean, compared to the Thai, it was quite interesting to see because her style was a lot of like left kick to the body, a lot of push kick, left kick, step in elbow, push kick, round kick. Like she just kept countering Stamp every time she would step in for boxing, which is funny because that's typically like. The Western Thai thing, like that's what happens when Western fighters go to Thailand. It's like they try to get in punching range, and the Thais just keep them away with better range with their kicking, pushing, leg kicks. But then you said kicks. Stem looked tired. Um, yeah, the last few rounds. I think she's just doing too much. She fought MMA. She's fighting a bunch of cans in MMA. <laughs> like, yeah. So they're just giving her cans, giving her cans, trying to build her up. It's a different and, kind of training to when you're doing MMA, right? Yeah. And then uh, they, she, they had her fight Janet Todd. She lost that fight, and then she lost to uh, Alicia. Oh, she lost to Janet as mm-hmm. well. Yeah, so she lost both her titles. She had the kickboxing title and she had the Muay Thai title. And then she lost both of them in a span of like two months. Two two foreigners. Yeah, and then sandwiched in between an MMA win where she... This is how you know that they're just giving Stamp a bunch of cans. When she's submitting people in MMA... Oh, yeah. That's when you know they're just like, oh, let's just give her whoever we can find. She's a blue belt, no? 
I don't like, care no. what she is. If she's, <laughs> if she's taking she's people's back and enough. choking them. I can't them, say that. Of course she, I can say maybe that. Maybe she put in, you know, a lot of time. I, I'm not saying she's not putting in time, but there's no way that the opponents that she's fighting are quality. If she's <laughs> taking them down are not and good. tapping them out. Like, there's just no fucking way. Oh. I mean, if she's beating them on the feet and sprawling and brawling, okay, then fine. But if she's taking them down and then choking them, it's like arm barring maybe them. Maybe she's think, that good. I think she arm bar- <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. I'm not saying she's bad, but compared to her Muay Thai, if she's taking people down and choking them or arm barring them, like they're probably just giving her opponents that are a little too easy, which they do with the ties. Which she's only had two MMA fights, so I'm not saying they need to give her like they need to build her slowly. Mm. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I think that's that's definitely what's going on. So we, we got something here. Um, uh, you're still plugging away here, Jake. Yeah, yeah I got the. Uh Maybe, maybe we can get away with showing a microsecond of the uh, 540 punch off of YouTube. You want to brave it? Uh, okay, sure. Okay, here Let's we go. Let's just see a, a quick clip. Of the ball punch? Oh, is that the, the ball, ball Oh, that's the 540, oh. right? Let Try again. Right. Uh, a little, back a little further. Here it is. Watch this. Boom, boom, boom. Pow! Look oh at that shit. Oh, my God. Can you go back and then make it full screen? Give it a go. Maybe this will get us pulled off YouTube. Yeah, but we're really about getting pulled, but... Luckily, we're not popular enough for it to matter, so I think it should be fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Watch this shit, dude. So this is the one, the punch. Watch that, watch that. Boom! Oh. Isn't that fucking crazy? Look at that! Almost looks like a hook or something. Yeah, like I mean, hook. he was coming out of the out of the spin, so it may have had a little bit of an angle on it like that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I've never seen the punch version of it. So we started doing a little bit of these in class, right? We started trying to do these, like, 360... Yeah. Turning we, kicks. Yeah, turning kicks and side kicks and you know, I kinda took like the the, the Joe Rogan path with the Taekwondo. He he'd always mentioned for years that if you're gonna start to learn all of this like fancy spinning shit, right? You should have a really solid base with boxing, you should have a really solid base with kickboxing, your jujitsu, your wrestling, obviously you need all of those fundamentals. And then when you get that stuff like solid, then you start trying to add all of this stuff to it, right? And I think that's the move. For the last couple of years we've been doing a lot of the heel kicks, the three sixty heel kicks the spinning back kicks and stuff and then now we're starting to try to do the the 540 kicks you and i were practicing them the other day yeah and uh it's hard they're yeah, hard to it's do hard. it's hard coming out of the spin to keep your balance especially then, when you're doing it on the mats because yeah. it's soft mm. so it's very difficult to balance on yeah. one leg and then to jump from your plant leg to your other leg and come through with the kick it's quite difficult yeah. so then when you see raymond daniels just doing all that shit you're just like damn man at 40 years old too like he's damn explosive he almost caught a few of them in that fight um but yeah, so I think that's the move, right? Get your basics down, get your boxing, your kickboxing, your Muay Thai, and then slowly start to sprinkle in the spins, the back elbows, the back fists, the back kicks, the wheel kicks, and then if you want to start to add like the 360, the 540 kicks, but they're, they're not easy. They're not easy. A couple of our students are pretty good at it. Vlad's good at it. Yeah. Sid can do them. Me and you are still are still new, so. <laughs> You're still trying to balance. So do we have the, the flying dick kick here? I'm um, just... Um just trying to get through an advert and then hopefully we will see what happens when spinning round and throwing limbs at people goes hideously wrong. I mean, it sounded like a, a gunshot, like, because it hits the cup, right? I don't know what if he was wearing a plastic cup or a steel cup, but, and the thing was, the fight was close. Like, they were both doing pretty well, uh, which was, and it was an MMA fight, which is weird, because Raymond Daniels is not really a, a grappler or a striker, mm. but it, he's damn exciting, man. He's got a bunch of those. Like that, that uh, jumping 540 punch, he's got other uh, knockouts like that too. He's the one that did the, he did, oh God, he's got so many. He'll do the, the jumping switch kick to the head where like the one that Vlad was showing you where you mm. jump up with the left leg and then the right leg comes over the like top. you touch and then you kick. Yeah, he does that one. And then he also does the crazy one where it's like, like so if I'm in a sideways stance, right, and I side kick you with my front leg. So he'll jump with this leg and then he'll turn and he'll back kick you with the other leg. All in one motion. So it's like pop, pop. And hit somebody in the face with that. <laughs> like, he's damn exciting, man. Especially for, for 40 years old. That's why Bellator swallowed him up. But uh, I don't know why they didn't disqualify him. Two hard groin shots in a row. I guess they said it was unintentional, but... Two, two in a row, though. Like, I don't think it was intentional. Like I don't think he went in on the purpose to kick the guy's ball. No, but... Why does it have to be intentional for you to get disqualified? Yeah. Like. Okay, let's let's watch and then then say what we think. Okay. About it. So, <laughs> I so, think th- this is the this is the second one, not the first one. Please mm. please don't pull it. Oh, this is the second one. Okay. Please don't pull it. Okay, let's see what we got here. <laughs> Boom! Oh <laughs> yeah. See, what makes that bad too is he was in the air because he was throwing a kick. 
right? Yeah. This, this is when everybody gets hit in the balls, right? As soon as you lift up your leg to do a kick and your fucking groin is just exposed, can you go again? <laughs> let's, see, let's see that again. Okay, uh, give me a second. I mean, I feel really bad for that guy. He, like, he cowered to, in a corner. I don't think he can move anymore. Dude, that's that. why I get afraid sometimes in the gym of throwing, like, the left kick. If I know I'm going with people who don't properly know how to bring their kick up, mm -hmm. and they do that, like, really chopping low kick, if I try to push kick or I try to round kick with my left leg, it's just, boom, Ben did that to me one day in, uh, in sparring. Mm -hmm. I went to throw, like, a left kick, and then he tried to just pick up, but he didn't go up and over, yeah. so it just comes right in the middle of the legs. It's like, ah. Oh! But the back kick is even worse. I haven't actually kicked anyone in the balls during sparring before. Yeah, you're pretty, you're pretty good about it. Cause Maybe you, it's because I'm too short. No, because you, <laughs> you, you kick up. You kick up and around like you're, like you're meant to. You want to go one more time? Yes, yes. please. <laughs> Let's see if we can make that shit big. Boom! Oh, 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 oh yeah. It looks painful. Yes, and that, there were two of those. So that was the second one, right? But it was the fact that is, he, he'd thrown it once caught him and then he thought well i'll just try again <laughs> yeah exactly well and there's no way we can we can play just the sound right uh no no okay. I'm looking. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and i mean i feel bad for the guy i'm not trying to be a dick <laughs> i shouldn't uh, be laughing at him he <laughs> uh, just sounded he seriously sounded like a dying like fucking ewok or something <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> but there were a few there were a few screwy finishes this weekend because there was that one and then the one on um Friday night. Did you see the heel hook? Leg lock? Uh, who was it? Oh god, some, some unpronounceable Russian guy was just like wrestling this guy to the ground, just could take him down at will. So then basically gets him in a leg lock position. I'll, I'll try and bring it up in a second. Gets him down and just, he's sort of on the floor and something happens and he just stands up, he's like, you tapped. But... So was the tap. UFC? No, no, this was one. Oh, this was one. one. Yeah, oh, yeah, I didn't yeah. know they had an MMA, MMA fight somewhere. I just watched no. the two. The two. The co-main. What was it? The Supergirl? Yeah, not the Supergirl fight. It, it was on the card. But it was that card, that. right? Yeah, Supergirl yeah, yeah. and uh, who, who was the other... Can you bring up the card? Yep. <laughs> just bring up the card and then we'll see. Yeah, because this... I was telling Charmaine, this girl is Supergirl. I don't know what the rules are in Asia, but they 16, have the... 16, right? She's 16 years old. So yes. it's Supergirl and then it's like her sister is like Wonder Girl or some shit like that. I can't remember exactly what their names are. But some Thai girl. And uh, yeah, she's fighting a one at 16 years old. That wouldn't be legal in America, right? I'm pretty sure you can't fight in the UFC if you're 16. <laughs> like, no, we know like some 14-year-olds that, that fought too. Remember Vlad from KL? Yeah, amateur you can, do, you can do that. Oh, I thought it was pro. But I mean, fighting at one uh, yeah, yeah. at 16 years old. I mean, I guess... I'm sure, with par parental consent, you can do it. Parental consent, you can do it. She's got some crazy knees, man. She's got... Have you seen the video of her doing uh, those spear knees? No. So, uh, Jake, whenever you aren't overwhelmed over there... <laughs> He's like, stop asking me so for shit. Card, if, you can, if you can, at some... We'll chat for a minute first, but like, if you can... Stop asking me for shit. If you can... <laughs> So Jake's working a lot, guys. We have a whole new setup. So he's bringing up the pages. He's flipping, flipping between the cameras. So uh, okay, I do have the card up. So let's we'll, see, let's we'll, see this. What's her name? The the girl. Super you girl. mean the best game? In, best name in MMA is Su Supergirl Jaron Sak Muay Thai. So Supergirl. We'll just call her yeah, that. Supergirl. Supergirl. But Sixteen years old. She, she's got she's crazy high? knees. Is her record there as well? Just curious. If it's not, it's no big deal. Uh, give me a second. But yeah, 16 years old. She's fought a bunch of fights. She just wrecked some girl that they... I think she finished her in like two minutes or something of the, of the first fight. But the, yeah, look how young she is. Holy shit, you can just see it in her face. Can you bring that up? Yeah, look at that shit, man. 16 years old. But oh my goodness. There's video of like... Her, her dad's quite a big star as well, I think. Like a trainer and stuff like that. And she's been training since three years old. Wow. And he puts stuff up on the Instagram of like a three-year-old her just wrecking every yeah. bag. Wow. So God help whoever goes in the ring against her. So can you uh, just just Google her name and then type in knees? I'm sure we can find a video of that, that that won't get pulled. I mean, her knees are ridiculous. Like she's she can knee people from the range that most people kick from. Wow. She's got that spear knee, right? Like th there's a couple ways you can do the knee, right? You can bring the knee straight up and forward. I wish I could show it on the camera, but I'll knock everything over. So you can you can bring it straight up and forward. You can bring it around right so it can kind of come around the side and then hit you in the ribs and then the way she does it she lifts it up and then she punches it forward so it's, it's called a spear knee and i mean dude the fucking power look at that yeah let's wow. bring that up 
I mean, look at this shit, dude. Boom, boom, boom. Look how she just punches oh. those in there. I mean, that's that's a problem. <laughs> you, you get hit with a few of those, that's that's not She's good. She's even bigger than the guy holding pets for her. The ties are small, man. Oh, the yeah. ties are small. Did she, um, well, hang on, let me jump back to the card and we can have yeah, a yeah. at the card. She's got the second best name in martial arts. The first one is Turbo Shark Kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> you you it out. By the way, I'm not I'm not joking about this. Turbo me, shark kitchen. I want to find it. I have the media saved on my phone. Do we laugh for like a straight five feet? I laugh for train? so long because of this. And I, I want to find the actual name because I, I sent it on the the group chat. It was uh, so funny, dude. Tur Turbo shark kitchen. Isn't that what it was, Charmaine? I think so. I want to see if I if I can find it, but it's been so long. Is since this Thai guy? <laughs> called Turbo Shot Kitchen. Is his gym named Turbo Shot Kitchen? I don't know. He's like ranked is in the... Is he a chef? That, you know, <laughs> what, is he, what does he do? I mean, he's ranked in the top 10. Okay, hold on. Uh, oh, okay, yes, yes, yes. I got it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send this to you, Jake. I'm going to airdrop it to you. Can I airdrop it to you? Uh, airdrop it to this Mac. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's... Uh, I'm going to do this so you guys can see. It's S S Sib Saiyan Turbo Shark's Kitchen. <laughs> it is uh, Turbo Sharks. Turbo Sharks Kitchen. Yeah, that, that's the best part. Did he, he, he needed to make it, you know, plural. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, so Stronghold one, right? Yeah. Okay, All right, it's, it's coming. And uh, this is not a joke. This is not a joke, people. It's not a joke. You know, what, you know how I found out about this? Because uh, I was talking to Ahmed and Steven and everybody in the group chat, and we were talking about, like, who's the best pound for pound Muay Thai guy, and I was talking about. Uh, to uh, Road Tang, right? Yeah. And then, uh, so they pulled up the, the Lumpini top 10 rankings, and then all of a sudden I look down this and I see fucking Turbo Shark Kitchen, and I was like, what the fuck is this? You find it? You zoom in on the bottom of that, dude. Look, this is not a joke. This is the top 10 ranks oh, in Lumpini. Look at number nine. Look at that. <laughs> First of all, look and see, this is it. So Road Tang is ranked number three. I think this is, uh, this is Lumpini. Oh, this is 2000, okay, November 2019. Sib, Sib Saiyan Turbo Shark's Kitchen. What the fuck oh my God. is that? Maybe it's pronounced differently. Maybe no, what? How, can you? <laughs> How can you pronounce that differently? Uh, dude, yeah, there's no way. That's if ridiculous. You, pronouncing that with an Asian accent, as well, like a Thai accent, that's not going to make it any less funny. If anything, that's going to add to the comedy. I mean, I hope that guy gets a contract with one. I hope he becomes the Conor McGregor of Thai MMA What's or Muay Thai. What's happening to what? My camera. Oh, yeah. What's going on there, Jake? Uh, I don't know. I've got to see this could be, Give me a sec. So, uh, so uh, yeah, Turbo Shark's Kitchen. Anyway, so the this uh, Supergirl, 16 years old, fighting. She was like the main event in this fight card, and then uh, the Com or they had a, this Pong Siri was the the main event, and he just wrecked some Irish guy that didn't have didn't. It was a pretty decent fight. He did it. He had a pretty decent showing. There wasn't there a Cambodian guy too. Uh, that was a different fight. Oh, that was just a fight. one that they'd released it. We'd watch. Did you sort that out? Mm. Okay, cool. Um, anyway, so you got the one card, right, from last weekend? Uh, yeah, I'll bring it up. So unfortunately, there's not a lot of MMA going on right now because all of the one fights are happening in Thailand. So pretty much most of those are Muay Thai. Occasionally, they'll get a few ties to do some MMA. Now, what confused me is because I thought it was a full-on Muay Thai card and no MMA, and then I might have been down the pub with it on. <laughs> the first fight, and then suddenly a guy hit a take takedown. I was like, what? Why is he? Oh, it's not. It's an MMA fight. So the, the first... Three fights, I think I'm right in saying, on the card were MMA fights, and then it cut to the uh, Muay Thai fights and stuff like that. But they all ties? All the fighters were ties, right? No, no. Lower down the card, there was a there was a mix, but then yeah, up at the top there were a lot of Thai fighters, so that's when it goes over. I to mean, it was in the, the card was in Bangkok, so yeah, that yeah. makes sense. But um, this one. Um, okay, let's look at the main card here, or the, the the fight with the heel hook that you mentioned. So the uh, this one, the Abu Muslim Ali Khan. Off Say. Sounds right. Yeah, it's spot on. <laughs> so the, his, his was a super screwy finish. I'll see if we can bring it up in a second. Mm -hmm. that, I mean, he was just wrestling this guy to the floor non stop. And then he gets him, heel hooks him, goes away. And the guy maybe he tapped, but not enough to say for certain. And the ref certainly didn't stop it. But um, the Abu Muslim guy just stood up and was like, I tapped. And the ref was like, oh, All right. What? They did, did they go to replay? <laughs> no, just. I'll bring it up and, and yeah, see, let's, yeah, see, what let's, let's see if you can you can find the finish there. Um, 
Yeah, that's that's interesting. I mean, I've, I've pretty much just been watching the main card because the thing is, like, with these uh, with these Thai cards that they've been doing, like, I think the last three were in Thailand because you know you can't really travel internationally. One can't afford to pay people to go, and then so many of these countries have their borders closed or restricted. So they've been doing a lot of shows in Thailand. And, uh, you know, once you get past the main card, like, these are all pretty obscure TIE fighters that, that, that you know, the, their names are hard to say. I've never heard of them. A lot of them are, like, local guys that they're starting to try to get on there. So I don't, I don't know a lot of the guys. I've just been paying attention to the, the, the main cards. But to, that's interesting. I didn't know that they put any, uh, any MMA fights on the card. So that, that's good to see. I can't believe there's not a Thai who's, like, budding world champion in MMA. Because the thing is, like, you can make so much more. Most Thais are about money, right? They're prize fighters. Like, they're not having two or three or 400 fights because they really enjoy fighting. I mean, to some extent, that's true. But they're, they're fighting to pay their bills. Yeah. Right? They're fighting for the, the bot. And they're it's fighting like they for their families. they money, too. Yeah, but this is what I'm saying. Like, if they fought MMA, there's way more money to be made in MMA than there is in even the, the stadium fights. But you said that the Thais don't really do good in MMA. Well, I mean, I'm just surprised that more of them haven't, like, really gotten into jiu-jitsu, really gotten into wrestling, and then taken that elite-level striking into the UFC, into one, into Bellator, into whatever. Because, uh, you know, all you need, if, if you have world-class striking like that, you got five or six years of wrestling, a purple belt, a brown belt, like, you'd be an elite, elite MMA fighter. Yeah. And I'm really surprised because jiu-jitsu's been in Thailand for years now. I mean, I, I trained jiu-jitsu Phuket in Thailand. Top team. Phuket top team. You've got Tiger Muay Thai. You've got... But most of those gyms, it's like Russians and White people. Kiwis and yeah, foreigners going there. I, I can't believe there haven't been a lot of Thai breakouts and, and stuff yet because it just seems like the money would be so much more. You can fight three times a year instead of 30 <laughs> like, like they tend to do, you know? I think some of it is though, like the sheer cost, because a lot of the Thai, you know, the Thai fighters are doing it and come from very you know, impoverished backgrounds. And then your BJJ gyms are set up for expats and people flying in and stuff mm. like that. And to your average Thai fighter, the you fees for the it. gym is just yeah. no way. Yeah, yeah, there's probably something for that. Uh, do you want to see this quickly? Let me is this the heel hook thing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's take a look here. Oh my God, is that is that it? Oh, okay. No, they're still going. <laughs> I thought it's. Oh. Is it? There we go. The guy did tab though. I, I didn't. Uh, I didn't see that. Can it, you? Can you go back? It's like that yeah, really it'll, quick. Yeah, it'll come around again. Let me just jump off it. But but it's great because he's like, oh no, you, you tapped, you tapped, you know, that's it. And then the ref's like, oh, did he? All right, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> okay, so yeah. so bring that up. Let's take a look again. There. That didn't look like a tap to me. But look. <laughs> okay, one more time. Let's watch the whole the whole sequence again. Because that was a pretty sloppy heel hook. It's gonna it's gonna play here again. Okay, so from oh, he fell back on it. He's reaping. He's got the and it's gonna like turn. Split. Yep. There. No, that was just a touch. That looked like he was just touching. It, it was like. I don't think that was a tap, man. And the ref just bought it. Hey. Yeah. He won by a heel hook or whatever. Yeah, won, won by a won by submission. Did he even have the heel? It's hard to tell from the angle. It looked more like he was going for a straight ankle lock with a reap. Hmm. See, he looks. He, he doesn't have the heel exposed. Yeah, he's not even doing a heel hook. He's doing an ankle lock with a reap. But yeah, it was, it was a strange finish to that one. It was like one of several strange finishes this weekend <laughs> because then you got that. And the next day, like, oh yeah, there's, there's quite a big groin kick in this fight. Mm. And then um, even today, I didn't actually see the fight, but there was some controversy on the UFC card today about uh, one of the finishes they weren't very happy with. So yeah, odd weekend. Yeah, there were so many fights this weekend. I just struggled to watch everything. Because I watched the, the one fights two days ago, and then today there were two cards on just this morning, and then I, I watched the Bellator fights, I watched the Machida fight, and then I watched the Raymond Daniels fight, and then I watched the end of the Angela Hill, uh, Michelle Watterson fight, and then I just didn't have time to go through the card because we're working whenever the, the cards are on and stuff. But um, uh, so let's let, let's move on. We have, you have a preview of next week, right? Next week there's a big card. So next week we have uh, uh, we have Colby Covington, Tyron Woodley. And then the co-main event is Donald Cerrone and Nico Price, right? Yep. Okay, so let's uh, start with the main event. Charmaine, who do you like between Woodley and Colby? I don't know. Woodley's a pretty boring fighter. Yeah, so <laughs> Colby, probably, just because I won the, the heel to win. Yeah, it's fun, right? Yeah, I mean... He seems like he's just—he seems like a nice guy, but he's just like putting on a front, a bit too 
fake though. Yeah, but you you know he's one of those guys that everybody loves to hate, right? He is the ter- the stereotypical heel, like he's the villain that people need for someone to like to cheer for Woodley, right? Because yeah. otherwise, but he's a great fighter. Yeah, he's awesome. A lot of his fights are really good. Really I even exciting. like his gimmick, right? I like his like Trump <laughs> gimmick because it's, it's just I just, it's a gimmick, right? Like I don't think that he's really like that. It's like wearing the cheapest suit ever to gr- like, make America yeah. great again <laughs> and then and, to make America great and he again. hires and he hires those like girls to go around and make him look yes. like he's a bitch and then they're like talking shit the stripper girls <laughs> the stripper girls <laughs> and it's like hugging them and they're just like Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think uh, I think I think Colby gets it done too Woodley's just he's the least exciting. interesting and exciting fighter did you champion. see his like rapping video yeah <laughs> Bad. Love you. What, 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 what <laughs> it's like so monotonous. What's, what, what's the song? I don't know. Dylan Danis. That's okay, Jake. You don't have to pull it up. Dylan, <laughs> Dylan Danis always shit talks him on it when I see it on Instagram. But yeah, I just don't see how any, any way he wins. The problem with Woodley is he's he's a guy that's relied on his athleticism his whole career, mm. and uh, he's turning forty. Like he's starting to push forty, and he just doesn't have the power, the explosiveness. You know, uh, Dan Hardy talked about Woodley, and I think he, he described it great. Typically, fighters fall into three categories, right? They fall into, they're either a fighter, which you would think like Donald Cerrone's a fighter, Nick and Nate Diaz are fighters, right? And then you have martial artists, that's like Machida, that's like George St. Pierre, and then you have uh, athletes. And athletes are like Woodley, right? Like, they're people that, Yoel Romero, he's a fucking athlete, right? You have like those types. And I think, and everybody has a little bit of everything, but broadly, I think people mostly fall into those categories. I think that's true. And Woodley's an athlete, and the athletes don't, they have the shortest shelf life. He's not a fighter? He is, but I mean, if you look, you look at him fighting, do you think he likes fighting? No. No. He's always backing up. He's always gets his back against the cage. He's looking for big shots. He's never in there scrapping, mixing it up, like giving one to take one. He's just trying to, he's circling, moving back, trying to set up his big power shot, and that's pretty much it. So do you think it's going to be a boring fight with I Kobe? think Colby's going to finish him or just put it on him, worse than Burns did. Because, uh, I mean, Woodley can still catch him. But uh, I think I think uh, Colby's just going to put that pace on him, avoid the big shots, wear him out, beat him down, and then probably finish him. If he doesn't finish him, he might decision him because Woodley's been notoriously difficult to finish. Yeah. It's a good fight, though. What do, you, what do you think, Jake? I think um, Com- Covington put on one of the best performances I've seen in a few years when he fought, um, was it Dasan Jossi fought to get his title shot? Did you see that one? Yeah. Where it was just the pace he put on. Yeah, yeah. Just looked like... He's like a freak, man. <laughs> yeah, like he was just absolutely pouring it on him. And if he does that against Woodley and yeah. can't get clipped, yeah. then there's, I, do, I, do, I can't say how Woodley will, will, will beat him. Like Woodley's got to hit that power shot. Mm. If Woodley doesn't hit that power shot, he's just going to be getting, not like cracked, but that 60%, 60%, 60% to the body and face for five rounds. Like, I, d- I don't see, yeah, backing up against the fence doesn't really work against that, looking for a big power shot. <laughs> so, um, Woodley's a, a wrestler, is it? Yes. Yeah, he's, he's got good wrestling, but wrestling-wise, possibly even, like, Covington's wrestling's really good as well. I think yep. he wrestled college. So, uh, division one. Division yeah, one. Yeah, division one. So I don't really see Woodley getting it unless he's always got a puncher's chance because he's so powerful, but... I don't think I can't even. Remember Does Woodley ever time. finish anyone? He used to back when he was uh, like do- doing his championship run. He finished Robbie Lawler for the title. He finished Darren Till with what? Like uh, right hand. That's oh. pretty much all he does. He's got a power right, and he used to wrestle more, but he doesn't wrestle these days. And I don't think either one of them can take each other down or hold each other down. I think it's going to be a strike fest. I think Covington's just going to outwork him. The volume. That's the thing about Woodley is he do- has does not have the volume. If he starts to get down in the numbers. He only relies on the, the knockout to try to get the win back. He just can't keep up with the pace, right? If people outwork him, he just can't keep up with the pace. He's got the big right hand, and uh, that, that's pretty much it. Um, I think you're right. I don't think it'll be. Uh, I don't think it'll be a good fight. No. I mean, if Woodley wins, it'll be like by a flash KO. I think it's a pretty low chance of that happening. So you don't think it's going to be exciting? Nah, I think it'll be. Uh, I think Col- Colby's going to beat him every round. You know, maybe not finish him, but he's just going to outwork him the whole time. Clear cut decision. Woodley retires afterward, if he's smart, because this will be his third loss in a row from after losing the title. Who did, who did he fight last time? He lost to Gilbert Burns. Oh god, yeah, that was when he was just. I mean, he's lost ten rounds in a row badly. He lost every round to Usman, clearly. Oh yeah, he lost his title to Usman. Yeah, and he lost every round to Burns easily. 
Mm. And if he loses every round to Covington, which I think he will, it's going to be 15 rounds to zero after career. losing his title. He was the champion, and then he, to lose 15 rounds in a row is pretty, pretty tough look. Who knows? Maybe he'll come back. But he's going to become a rapper. He's fine. Oh, what, what is that song? I just <laughs> so keep, bad, I keep dude. Thinking it. <laughs> I keep. I got the chorus. I can't exactly place the words in my head. Uh, anyway. But then uh, they mix up. Oh, uh, Don Cerrone and. Yeah, do you want me to bring the card up so we can? Yeah, up? totally, Price. totally bring that. Can we zoom in there a little bit? Okay, Nico Price, Don Cerrone. How then, old is Donald Cerrone? He's pushing forty-two. Oh. But he looked really good in his last fight. Pettis was his last fight, right? When did he? He lost. He lost to McGregor. Was that his last fight? Or was it uh, I think he fought Pettis. Pettis after that, and he lost, but I actually thought he won the fight. Mm. I'll look that up, to Jake, to save you some, some trouble here. But, uh, yeah, Cerrone and Nico Price. I think uh, Nico Price wins this fight. Nico Price is way bigger. He's a, is, it, is it 170, or is it... <clears throat> well to life. Well, to, yeah, I think I think Nico Price wins that. I He's hope, fucking huge. I hope huge. Cerrone wins. And it was, Pettis was his last opponent. And Pettis won... Uh, I don't know what the decision was, whether it was split or not. I saw the fight. But they thought it was Cerrone. <clears throat> decision, yeah. I thought Cerrone won the fight, yeah. The great fight. That fight was fucking great. It was such a good fight. So Cerrone still can, can bang. He can still go. He's pushing 40 as well. But Nico Price is really big. He's really strong. He is super tough. Really, really active. I think uh, Nico will probably finish Cerrone. He also just fight. got a new baby. Who? Uh, Cerrone. Danger. No. No, no. Another oh, one. another one. A new one. What's this one called? Riot, I think. Riot? What? Are you fucking kidding me? Why? Danger? Are you joking? Are you joking? You're not joking. No. Danger and Riot. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. What is Don Cerrone's problem? He's a madman, dude. Danger and Riot. Who's gonna name their him. kid Riot? Donald motherfucking Cerrone. The next man. one's chaos. Or yeah, something. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so I think that'll be a good fight. The fight card's pretty good. What's the third fight on there? Uh, Jake, can you bring up the main card? Oh, sorry. I'm, That's good. I'm, I'm, now, I'm now making sure I'm not spreading fake news by actually checking that name. Uh, we got um, Shimashev versus... Can you zoom in there? Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, so we got... Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, Kazmat, that guy. They fought twice and uh, two times in like three weeks. They booked him for another fight as well. So this guy, Kazmat, what's his name? Ch uh, Chimeev? Chimeev. Yeah, Kazimat Chimeev. So they booked him to fight <clears throat> in, I think it was in Fight Island. And then they literally booked him like two weeks later to have another fight. So he fought two times in, I think, two or three weeks. Won both of them dominantly in two different weight classes, right? Was he Russian? <clears throat> uh, I think he's uh, Dagestani, if I'm not oh. mistaken. And then they double booked him again. So he's got this fight against Gerald Mears Chert. <laughs> Just say the first name. You don't have to say that. And, uh, that's a tough one, guys. There's a lot of tough names today. And uh, then they double booked him again. And he's supposed to fight um, someone else also in Fight Island. So the question is, is like, is he looking, looking through this Gerald guy who's a pretty good fighter? Uh, because they booked him against already, I think, a higher-ranked opponent next time. So they just keep double-booking this guy. He wants to fight. He wants to fight every other week. So that should be an interesting fight. I hope they're paying him well. Yeah, me too. And he, that was his debut. So his debut, they booked him twice and two times in like three weeks and won both of them dominantly. Yeah. Oh, and also Johnny Walker, right? Oh, yeah, Johnny Walker. That guy too. who the worm. dislocated his <laughs> shoulder. Dislocated his fucking shoulder. After winning yeah. the fight. <laughs> Yeah, so that's a that's a pretty good card. Yeah, he's uh, he's got Walker. Ryan Spann and then uh, Mackenzie Dern's back in as oh, well. Oh, Mackenzie against, Dern. Uh, Random Marcos. Marcos. Yeah, she's gonna beat her, I think. Really? Yeah, Randa's has a pretty salty record. Canadian. Uh, Spann's a guy with that Superman tattoo on his chest, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty good fight card. Better than the one this week. Uh, I'll be watching it for sure. We'll we'll break it down next week. If I had to pick, I'm gonna go with Kobe. I'm gonna go with Price. Price. I'm gonna go with keep going down. I'm gonna go with Kazmat. I'm gonna go with Johnny Walker yeah, and Mackenzie Walker. Dern. I think that's the move. Boom. Done. And then uh, that's the only other fight card next week, right? Um, I, I don't even know. One seemed to have continual fights on as well at this moment in time. So they might have, a, have another one of these mm. MMA slash kickboxing cards. Uh, but I don't think it's a Bellator next weekend, so slightly calmer. Okay, well let's go into the let's go into the news. So we're gonna do a, a new little segment on the podcast where we're gonna do some you know some current events, some news. We're gonna break down some headlines from the week. We're gonna do this every week in the podcast now because I, I want to make sure that we have steady, consistent MMA content. 
you know, sometimes I get people on the podcast, whether it's like Dr. Allen or whether it's Bruno or whether it's people that maybe don't follow MMA, even like Bruno and Dr. Allen, like they train, they do BGJ, they do all this stuff. But, uh, you know, I don't know that they're really following. Oh, cheers. I don't really know that they're following MMA as often as we, we do. So I want to make sure that we have regular MMA content. We break fights down. We, uh, we react to them and then we preview them. So we're gonna add this segment to the podcast every week and I'll release it as its own segment so everybody can get their MMA fix and uh, you know, then we'll still have cool guests on to talk about whatever. So we'll make sure that we have both every week so we have consistent MMA content and then consistent interesting guests. So, Jake, what you got for me, brother? Uh, so first up, you, you sent me this one a few weeks back uh, but we've not looked at it because we didn't have the technology. It's the, the, so y- you, you can run actual professional commentary on this one of uh, the five, five V1, was it, that happened down at uh, Esplanade? Oh, it, it was Esplanade, right? Yeah, so I'm sure everybody saw this story. It went viral. You saw it before as well, right, Charmaine? Yeah, Mothership. Yeah, on, it, it's on Mothership. It's on a bunch of different websites. And it's basically the police trying to detain this one guy. There's like five fucking police officers trying to detain this guy and uh, we're going to show you the video and I'm going to react with you guys a little bit to it. It's really interesting, right? Because one, you can see how policing is so different in Singapore than it is in America, right? And uh, Jake, when, when you show the video, can you put me in the corner for the, to react to it? I do know how to do that. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> so, so we'll see if we can make that happen. And uh, you know, I, I want to say one thing before we watch this video. I would rather my police officers use less force than too much force. I mean, they tased the guy, so it was some force used on that guy. Well, it's just like was was wasted because they didn't actually catch that guy. Uh, I think they got him later. Oh, they got him later. But I mean, they could have shot him. Yes. Right. He punched one of the cops. Yeah. True. So I just wanted to be said before this: if you're a police officer and you're watching this, of course I'm not criticizing any individual, right? I mean, one of my students here is a police officer, and I'm going to try to. Well, not going to try. It's already going to happen. We're going to go uh, train a lot of his uh, of his colleagues. He's already worked it out, and we're going to go and we're going to do some self defense and some basic stuff. He's told me some of the training that they do, and it's ancient. It's archaic. It's out of date. <laughs> Aikido. And something. this is this is not to shit on these cops, and I'm not trying to do that at all because I want to make it very clear that I would rather mm-hmm. police officers use less than minimum necessary force rather than fucking explode, get crazy, shoot someone and kill someone, which is happening so much in, in America. So I want it to be very clear, this is not me criticizing the police. This is just a video that uh, went viral a couple weeks ago and I thought it would be interesting to commentate on. And all I'm gonna do is talk about the sort of situational awareness and what these officers could have done to better and more easily detain this guy. Don't take it as a slight to the police officers because I respect all of them and uh, I'll do my best to help improve the quality of their training so that way <clears throat> you know no, no, no yeah. accidents happen Good. let's watch it all right let's watch it okay so is that on the main screen that's a that's not on the main screen right ah, okay here we go so how many police officers we got one two three four five police officers trying to circle and detain this guy can we zoom in a bit jake or is it impossible uh, not right I mean, okay, is no he problem. on drugs or, or something no, i don't think okay boom they just tasered him can you go back a little bit jake i want to see that Okay, so here's where it gets weird, right? Once you choose to tase somebody, and if you're just listening to this, this might be a good podcast to go watch. So they've got this guy surrounded. He's obviously stressed out. They're trying to talk him down. They're trying to talk him down. Everybody's got him surrounded. Boom, that's when they hit him with the taser. And he, down he goes, down he goes. Okay, pause there, Jake. Okay, so this is the first thing that I see here that's, that's kind of crazy, right? Five police officers surround this guy, they decide to tase him. As soon as this guy hits the ground, as soon as you choose to tase somebody, you are overcommitted, right? <laughs> you can't take tasing back, right? Now, let me tell you what I mean. There is no way to be rational with this guy right now who is just hit by a taser, right? What they need to do is immediately get on this guy, Handcuffed pin him. his arms behind him, Get on top of him, get some weight on him because right now he's going to be so furious, he's going to be so emotional, he's going to be so upset. <laughs> be like, you shocked that, me! Yes, oh you are not going to be able to have like a rational conversation with him. So they just tasered this guy, right? And now they're all kind of just sitting there <laughs> looking at him. Right? Everybody's just kind of watching him because nobody wants to react. They're all kind of shocked to, to see what happened and then no one knows how to react. 
right? So the thing is, when you choose to use minimum necessary force, whether it's by taking somebody down, whether it's by trying to handcuff them, tripping them, getting behind them, tasing them, clubbing them, or shooting them, whatever it is, right? How, whatever degree it is, once you choose to go to that place, you have to go fully, you have to, uh, you have to, you have to control the situation because now is not the time to talk to this guy, right? You need to get him under control, let him calm down a little bit, deal with it, and then sit him down and try to have a conversation. Okay, sir, so let's- Sir, sir, we really need you to calm down right now. <laughs> He's fucking, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't work. Okay, let's, uh, let's continue this video. So he's down, everybody's kind of just staring, wondering what the hell's going on. Oh my God. Nobody's getting on top of him. He's like, see right now, once he starts swinging, so he he's gets like, up, they let he's him get up. back in his car. He's, he's, now he's gonna try to run away. I mean, he's right, look, he's panicked, right? He's a cornered animal. And, okay, pause, pause Jake, right there. Listen, the reason you have to detain this guy, you have to hold him down, is because he almost fucking killed himself by going into oncoming traffic, <laughs> okay? <laughs> And I'm not trying to laugh at that. Charmaine. Oh my god, thank you so seriously. It's oh. so funny, dude. I'm sorry. It's funny Continue. because he didn't go into all the traffic. But Charmaine has no self control, right? <laughs> so uh, the, here's the reason why you actually need to detain this guy, right? Or, uh, or control this guy. Pin his arms behind until he, he needs to have a temper tantrum. He needs to freak out. And then when he's done, he'll be able to take a deep breath and relax. Because they let him up. He almost killed himself. Yes. It reminds me of the story in America where the police officers, remember where they went, where they found the guy sleeping in his car and he was drunk. Mm -hmm. Did you hear this? Remember the story? And then they try to talk to him. They know he's drunk. They try to get him out of the car. The guy freaks out, runs away, and then they shoot him, they shoot him in the back. Yeah. Right? Oh. And they did that because like, if he, he gets so amped. If you just leave him alone, you just pin him down, you just do whatever, let him calm down. Even if he's throwing a temper tantrum, you can't throw a temper tantrum forever. Mm. Eventually, you're gonna burn out and you're just gonna need, okay, okay. Because if you just let this guy go when he's emotional and he's freaking out, he can do damage, injury to himself or to other people. Have you, have you ever seen the video of where Masera takes the guy down in the restaurant? Oh yeah, he mounted and, that yeah, guy. And, and Masera's just sat on him and Mount going like, calm down mate, like, take it easy buddy, stuff like that. And, and exactly what you said, the guy's throwing a fit, throwing a fit, and quickly realizes he's not going anywhere and he's pinned and then just you know calms that eventually wears himself out and calms down like pinning down a toddler after 10 percent that's exactly what it is it's pinning out you just you freak out you burn your energy out you're not going to be able how long you're going to be able to do that for eventually you're gonna it's like uh it's like being a submissive dog right like eventually you just you they get in trouble they get in trouble they get in trouble they're just going to roll over and show their belly once they use all their energy up right okay let's let's go back to this And then this is where things escalate, right? So he's running away. He almost ran into oncoming traffic. <laughs> I didn't see this part. I mean, he's running away. Look at <laughs> <laughs> oh, this. Oh, my Shirt God. Shirt off, running down the street. And then somewhere here, he punches a cop. Can you go back and you find where he punched the cop, Jake? I don't know. I don't know where it's at. It's when he gets up and he runs away. So, I mean, this is where... It, this part, maybe? Uh, just in, in a second, like right as soon as he gets up and starts walking away. See so right here, I think he turns back. Was that it? I can't tell. Because they, they try to grab Boom, him. right there, yeah. right there. That's where he hit him. Yeah, so two things. After they tased him, if somebody had gotten on top of him and just pin, handcuffed him, sat him to the side, let his emotions stabilize a little bit, one, he wouldn't have gotten charged for assaulting an officer. Two, he wouldn't have damn near killed himself running into oncoming traffic. Mm. So that's why when you choose to use force as a police officer, you have to go for it. Mm -hmm. And you have to fully uh, take away the threat from, of the person to himself and to, to other people. So uh, yeah, that was one video I just wanted to react to. What are your thoughts on that, Charmaine, other than finding it hilarious? <laughs> just, yeah, it's, it's kind of sad that as the a, police officers can't even do you know, something so simple. As a martial artist, what do you think when you look at something like that? I, I mean with how these police officers are, are sort of handling the situation they're probably just too afraid to get in trouble to you know because it just ha this happened right after the george floyd thing mm -hmm. so they probably were trying to be very uh 
how do you say, like PC about it. Like, not they don't want to do anything too bad to that guy. Well, Sid told me that he actually did get briefed. Sid, who's a who's a police officer who trains here, he's the one who uh, is organizing me to go and me and him to go and do some seminars, some self defense stuff with the police officers. He told me that after that stuff happened, they all had meetings about making sure that they use that minimum necessary force, right? Mm. That's so, so they all know. They, they probably had more training than the American police did after after the Floyd stuff. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's something that they really concern about. What about yeah, you, Jake? Yeah, police what? all over the world got, like, bad reputation for it, right? Mm. But I, I, I'll say it again. I would rather police respond this way than by using too much force. Now, there is definitely a lack of training that's going on here, right? I mean, there's clearly issues here with uh, the response. But... I will take it any day to somebody getting shot, to somebody getting killed, stabbed, whatever the hell. Right? They chased this guy down. They caught him later. It is what it is. Uh, what are your quick thoughts, Jake, on that? I just think, you know, it'd be, it'd be nice for any security force anywhere in the world, just not Singapore. I would like, you know, I've gone out. I've had a few too many drinks. The police find me. I'd like them to just pin me to the floor and hold me there, like you say, until, you know, I've calmed down or sobered up if I'm in that state, rather than... You know, even in the UK where the police don't necessarily carry guns, rather than beat the absolute crap out of me with some like billy clubs or something like that. Yeah. Like the, the ability to hold someone down on the floor and just keep them there without hurting them, you, you'd figure that'd be, you know, every police academy around the world in every single country would be like, oh, that'd be a really useful thing to have instead of, well, we can just shoot them. <laughs> I mean, it seems pretty crazy to me, right, that they tase the guy, they drop the guy. And they just let him get back up and we're in, like fucking zap around the into oncoming traffic. Yeah, the, the taser's done the hard part. The taser's done the takedown for you. Well, you just got to mount. All it is is the situation was very shocking to the police officers. They never expected it to get to that point. Once it happened, nobody wanted to. Nobody knew how to react. Right. So it's just a training thing. And uh, one of your friends told us a story that uh, happened because he he used to be an officer as well. Steven, right? Mm. Yeah, he said like there was this female cop and this like 19 year old male cop that went to arrest someone who was on drugs at Orchard Towers or something. And then the guy that was on drugs like punched the lady and was like, tr you know, harassing her, like, uh, you know, hitting her and stuff. And then this 19 year old guy was just like shocked, like he just froze. He didn't know what to do. He wasn't trying to defend the female cop. He was just like just standing there frozen. So it was like, that's not the right reaction to have when you're yeah. with your fellow colleague. Well, I mean, <laughs> she's getting beaten up by sure. this like drugged up guy. But what what that is is it's just it, it it's there's there's people think it's fight or flight. There's three. It's fight, flight, freeze. Those are the three reactions that you have to violence to anything that shocks you right to the point where you have this panic about your well being or somebody else's well being. It's fight, flight, or freeze, and. Everybody in their head thinks they would react a particular way, but the reality is until you're in that situation, you just don't know how you're going to react. And uh, training is the only way to do that. And even then, until you deal with the situation personally, you never really know how you're going to react. So, I mean, you have two options, right? You can either slowly react or you can overreact, which is what happens in America more often than not, right? Is these people are overreacting. So, <coughs> so I'll, I'll say it again. I'd rather them... Be a, in in Singapore where people aren't carrying guns and people aren't stabbing each other often and like it's generally safe. It's okay to have a little bit more of a slower reaction. But having said that, Sid has told me what the police training here is like, and I definitely think they they can use some new training methods, particularly when it comes to grappling and restraining people, right? Because that is the best way for police officers to function. They shouldn't be throwing head kicks. They shouldn't be throwing overhand rights. They shouldn't be dropping people and stuff. They should just be learning how to get people's hands behind their back, pin them down, get weight on them, put them face down on the curb, uh, body lock them, bring them down. Two police officers get to either side of them, bring them down, tie them up, let them have their overreaction, then start to talk to them, let them be rational, save them from themselves, mm. right? When they're in that highly emotional state. Yeah, so, just restrain um, them. Yeah. But anyway, I, I love the Singapore police, and I, I, got, I got nothing bad to say. There's clearly some ways that they can improve uh, in their training, which uh, hopefully I can contribute to if we manage to work all this out. Anyway, did what you, else you got, did bro? You, um, I'm trying to find it. Sorry, Instagram's just not playing, but did you see the video that Henna Gracie posted this weekend of the 
the guy tries snatching a kid in oh, broad what? daylight. I, I'm sorry, I can't bring it up. It is insane. There's like two women sat at a table just minding their own business. Some dude, I think it was, I think I'm right in saying he was in South Africa, vaults over the fence in this restaurant and grabs the kid. Trying to like snatch a baby? Yeah. Oh my God. Like a five, six year old or something like that. Child. Yeah, like crazy. Wow. In South and, um, Africa. So what happened? Oh, well, luckily, to your point, some guy there knew jujitsu, just grabbed him, took his back, took him down and just held him there. And wow. it just goes to show that, you know, a little bit, you know, something that a, a good white belt could do, this guy managed to do and save the day. And obviously you don't, you know, you don't care much for someone who's trying to snatch a child, but you don't know what's going on. Like that guy could be high on drugs, whatever it is. He clearly needs help yeah. rather than, you know, if someone had just shot him or something like that. I'm, I'm trying to find it now just to show that, you know, even a little bit of jujitsu, can, you can hold someone in place until someone shows up and you you get help. Well, the good thing is, is like Singapore's got its shit together so much that you don't see a lot of the crazy shit here, right? But you see it in other places. Like uh, I sent you this message last night, dude. I don't know. I wish I could have seen your face when you saw the text message I sent you at like midnight last night. Because basically, Charmaine and I watched this video. <laughs> It's on MMA World, so if you guys don't know, you can watch, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel. It was channel. like 1 a.m. and you were sending him this Because it was so bizarre. I told Jake, I was like, dude, you have to watch it. So this is the story, right? So, um, uh, oh, God. <laughs> Man, I'm Joe, so tired. Joe Schilling. Joe Schilling, thank you. So Joe Schilling was at his gym, and he released this on his Instagram, I think, or his social media. Joe Schilling was at his gym teaching his classes, and uh, Joe Schilling is a kickboxing world champion. He's a glory champion. He's a beast. Fights in Bellator, Bellator kickboxing, MMA fighter. He trains like uh, the Diaz brothers, and he's been on Joe Rogan's podcast and stuff like that. And so he was teaching his classes, and apparently his students came up and told him that, hey, man, there's this weird guy that came in. He thought he was homeless. Yeah, this bum came in, and he's like using the shower. So then uh, Schilling is like, okay, what the fuck? What are you talking about? He's like, yeah, dude, some weird guy just came in and he's in there using the shower. And then uh, Schilling's like, okay, well, this bum came in using the shower. He, he says in the thing, he's like, bums need to shower too, so it's not a big deal. But he waits on him, right? He waits on him outside of the shower. He's waiting, he's waiting, he's waiting, he's waiting. This guy doesn't come, on, come out of the shower. Yeah. So Schilling starts knocking on the door. Knock, 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 knock. This guy's not coming out after he's knocking on the door for like five minutes. Yeah. And when you knock on the door for that long and no one comes out, you know some shit's going on. So he busts open the door, or the guy opens the door. I don't know what's going on. And the guy's got a dildo up his ass. Now, I can, he's like I, fucking I, himself yeah. in the ass. I can show you the caption that, that goes with the yeah. video. He's so graphic, by the way. Yeah. Catch graphic per- upcoming. Yeah. Catch a pervert in your... Fa- uh, sorry, catch a pervert in your family business bathroom with a fucking dildo. <laughs> I'm not sorry. Fuck this fuck. So, if you want to watch this, I mean, Joe Schilling beat the shit out I of mean, this guy. I mean, this guy was crying. He was like... Oh. He was crying. And, all this kind of, and then he's, he's like, like, like running around. away and then while he's crawling away Schilling is like kicking him in the ribs and all this kind of shit I'm not saying that's what you should do <laughs> I'm not saying Shuck. that's not what you should do or I'm not saying no you definitely way. said you should have done you should do that if somebody ever comes to what you in a bathroom what I say privately Charmaine what I say privately to you is not what I say publicly on the podcast I'm not saying you should <laughs> you're like I would definitely hit that people, guy but I'm you're saying you're just saying it's an option it's an option, and it's one that would not necessarily be wrong or right. He's mentally ill. Like yes, but you, you can't call someone, arrest him. Yeah, maybe. I don't know, man. I because to Schilling's point, and he talked about this. You never know what that guy's gonna if he's gonna be around. If he's gonna be around when you're not there, when you got kids there, when you got. It's just fucking weird. And these guys might be drugged out. This is America. They're in California. Like shit's weird. It's fucking pandemic time. Everybody's desperate. Like, get that, kick that guy out of your gym. I don't know if you got to beat him up. Maybe you call the cops on him or whatever. Wasn't there, like, a crazy guy that uh, broke into Anthony, uh, is it Anthony Smith? Yeah. Yeah, in his yeah, house, yeah. and he was, like, sc- dude, he, like, walked up to his door, and then he rang the doorbell, and he was, like, yeah, and, that like, was, oh, my God, it was, like. That was fucking creepy. It was so disturbing. So there's weird stuff, and this is my point about the Singapore situation, right? Here, you generally don't have to deal with that stuff, but then you look at, like, that break-in with Anthony Smith. You look at that guy dildoing himself in a gym bathroom like that he's not a member of that he doesn't know like you just gotta wonder what's going through someone's head to fucking give them the compulsion to do that and he literally like he literally pulls like shows the picture of like the video of the dildo in the guy it was a green one (laughs) it was like a bright green green one It's on the floor they were kicking him and the dildo was just just rolling around 
It's inappropriate to laugh at this. Charmaine's a lot of inappropriate laughing today. It's so funny though. <laughs> oh wait, I got the, hopefully this is gonna load. I got the, the uh, Hannah Grossi video of why we do jujitsu. Let me just see if we can- Okay, sure. Yeah, let's take a look at this. Flight. While we're on the subject. So the guy used jujitsu to sort of yeah, yeah, detain was... the guy, is it? Okay, so let's see what we got here. Oh, oh shit. shit. Oh shit, oh shit. Oh my God. It's got him in like a choke. Oh, drops him down. So, sorry, can you go back to the the original, like when he jumped over the thing? I just want to isolate who the guy is. It's that guy, right? He's jumping over the rail. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how do you think it was okay to oh do that? Oh my God, is he just trying to snatch? Dude, that guy, the guy in the black shirt saw that fucking guy coming. Yeah. Wow, that is it crazy. Takes him down, takes his back, just holds him there. Yeah, he just detains him. Put the hooks in. Look at that. He's got the hooks in. Now... At this part, you know, I'd be trapping that guy's arm and killing him, but <laughs> he showed a lot more restraint than I, would, I think uh, some, some other people would have in that situation. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it, it just goes to show that, you know, learn jiu-jitsu. Yeah, I mean, what is people snatching up babies in South Africa? I mean, what was the plan? I, I, I don't 100% know. It's do, South we, do we know the facts behind thing. the, like, was it some, I don't know, like no, an I, uncle, I, I, fucking crazy relative, or just some random person snatching up babies? Trafficking kids. So if you look what um, Henna says, I tested, oh, he talks about, yeah. Um, the speed and selflessness with which this jiu jitsu practitioner, practitioner who chooses to remain anonymous takes action against the very determined child abductor at a cafe in South Africa is nothing short of heroic. Wow, that is crazy. Anyway, yeah. Train Jiu Jitsu, everybody. I loved Andrew Yang's idea about every police officer should be a purple belt. For those of you who don't know, Andrew Yang is uh, an Asian. I don't know why I had to leave with that. <laughs> but he's a, he's a, he was a presidential nominee. He's an Asian guy, Asian American. And he was running for president. And uh, he's the guy that, that made the, the freedom dividend, universal uh, basic income. Yeah. He brought that idea out. But his children train Jiu Jitsu. And he's aware of it. He knows all the ranks and he knows like he knows what he's seeing, right? And he mentioned on Joe Rogan's podcast that he thought every police officer should be a purple belt. I don't know that I think every police officer should be a purple belt, but I don't understand why police officers can't have three hours of jujitsu a week as part of their work shift. I don't understand why they couldn't do that. Hey, beginning of your we have jujitsu at eleven o'clock, you're on shift, you come train. Like two or three times two or three hours a day. Oh sorry, a week. That's all you need to do. Like, do, over a few years of being a police officer, you're going to have so much knowledge, so much skills. Like, I don't think you need to be a purple belt, but I, I think that's a good idea. Anyway. But Jay. I think even, you know, the basics, being able to mount someone, being able to, you know, knee on belly, take the back, yeah. stuff, like white belt stuff. Yeah. You don't need to be a purple belt. You, like, know, what, you know what Sid told me? Sid told me that... Uh, that like what they teach you is like if you're being striked right like someone's throwing a strike at you you're supposed to like balk it like that and then you're supposed to grab the wrist and like spin it behind their back like like Some a shit. old aikido shit doesn't work right and then he was like he was yeah he was telling me all these different things about what and sid is the one i was talking to about this video of the the singapore police officers and stuff i mean he's a martial artist so he's keenly aware of of how the training is not uh, is not kept up with the times, with the evolution of martial arts, right? And uh, I think that was his point. So, because he was telling me some of the techniques that they learn, and it's just not, not up to, up date. to date. Yeah. All right. Anyway, Jake, let's move on. What, what else you got for me, bro? I'm trying to think. There's so much through. Uh, do you want to talk about the McGregor one? Or yeah, yeah. I guess. Can you read the what the sexual read the assault article? One? Yeah. Uh, what happened? I mean, he keeps denying everything that happened. Yeah, I mean, he keeps denying it. It's hard to say what's true, right? But I mean, he's so famous, so people like to stir shit up. But yes. still, but he also, did punch a guy. Yes, also, <laughs> he's made it clear that he's got... Anger issues. A issue, yeah, self-restraint issues. It Didn't they like say that uh, he was uh, baby daddy to some like weird, uh, some crazy chick that he fucked on a one-night stand? And then oh. it turned out to be not his kid because they tested it. <laughs> and so I like, wouldn't be surprised if that happened but yeah I mean basically he's getting accused of, of sexual assault so uh, ar arrested in Corsica for in oh it's changed he said sexual assault Indecent but now it says exposure. Exposure. what do you do whip out his dick or something what, do you, what, do you, what did he do uh, I'm just going down let's bring <laughs> it up uh, 
Taken into police custody in Corsica on suspicion of attempted... Well, that's not the same. Attempted sexual assault and indecent exposure, the prosecutor's office said on Saturday. And then there's a complaint filed. Obviously, he uh, strenuously denies it. The statement gave no details of the alleged offence committed by 32-year-old McGregor. It's all very vague. Yeah, very, very vague. But there was... um, Outside of this one, because... It happened in Europe, and whilst um, you know the Singapore police do, but he was actually arrested, right? So yeah, mm. but the uh, whilst the Singapore police, Singapore police do a very good job here and stuff like that. I have some experience with European police, and they are not the greatest people in the world. They uh, they are very um, very quick to uh, reach for truncheons and things like that. Mm. They once tried arresting me uh, for having the gall to load a van on a Sunday without a permit load a van yes i was trying to put some music equipment onto a van that's and, it uh, that, that was all i was doing wait you need a permit to put shit in a van <laughs> there is a reason that italy's very close to bankruptcy oh my god <laughs> yeah that that's just government bullshit gone amok if you need a permit to put stuff in a van but but they are known um, the european police are not known for being the best in the world so also. did they really arrest you for it be no, trying to bully you or something like threaten you oh yeah I, I, they were very much they just saw a bunch of English people in Italy on a Sunday loading stuff into a van and they just were not having it and were telling us we had to stop what we were doing and how you needed a permit to mm. work on a Sunday and we were like what? <laughs> this doesn't make any sense and um, I, I've had a few run-ins and stuff like that just for absolutely nothing they are very quick to um, get angry shall we say and they do not like foreign people in their country. And there's the McGregor one, and this has come up, but I don't know how much you follow soccer, but Manchester United's captain as well, recently he was arrested in Greece on what appeared to be trumped-up charges and things like that. So I would take this with a pinch of salt, shall we say. Yeah, well, I agree. You can't, you can't say shit until facts actually come out. That's why I don't want to jump on this. I mean, but, you know, the truth is... The truth is, Conor McGregor clearly has a short fuse. He has trouble with self-control. Uh, I mean, based on all of it, punching the old guy, based on throwing the dolly, based on countless things that he's done up to this point prove that he has a tough time with self-restraint. But having said that, it seems like a long a stretch to think that he would need to like assault somebody with, for sex. Like, yeah. So it's hard to say, right? It's- I mean... I'm sure every other girl is just throwing themselves at him. So. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure. Why he, would he need to like sexually like expose himself? <laughs> like everybody yeah. would just be like, "Ooh, it's picture, picture." Unless he's like just Louis C.K. and he's into that shit. You yeah. Know? Uh-oh. Unless, he, <laughs> unless he just likes it. To be fair, when if you saw the Merryweather uh, Mayweather, sorry, press conference one time when he came out in a pair of boxer shorts. Do you remember that one? Oh yeah, where I mean, his dick was hard. Uh, 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 like you were like, oh well, he's exposed himself on American TV. <laughs> yeah, there, yeah, so. yeah. yeah. What, okay, uh, Jake, you got anything else, man? What, what else you got there? Uh, the only other one uh, from the weekend was uh, a lot of the MMA community and stuff like that have come out in um, solidarity with. Did you see about the Iranian wrestler? Yeah, that I was saw that. that was on death row and. Um, what happened? I didn't hear about no, this. Let me throw it up. So um, yeah, he was on death row for an alleged murder that he was basically protesting against the regime in Iran, but he he fought. You know, he was on the Iranian Olympic team and stuff like that. Um, alleged that he was tortured and forced to confess. And a lot of the MMA community have come out this weekend. He was actually put to death. I think I'm right in saying the UFC oh even um, the UFC this weekend even dedicated the entire fight card to him and stuff like that. So obviously a very sad thing, but nice to see. Sorry, everybody, my mic just dropped. You know, the MMA community, the fighting community and stuff like that coming out in support. I just thought it's a nice thing to, you know, well, not a nice thing, but we should do the same thing, highlight him and say it's not good. Well, it's hard to say what happened there because, uh, I mean, didn't they say that he murdered somebody? That was, they don't, they don't seem to know whether the charges are trumped up or not. He, because he, says, he was at a protest and he in was Iran, forced to uh, give a confession, right? Yeah, and in Iran, you know, they're, they're not down with protesting, so if you want to go and you protest, then, then you run that risk. So, I mean, allegedly he killed somebody. I don't know if it's true or not. The whole world, at least the Western world, seems to think that this guy it was bullshit. Yeah, he, he very much said he was forced to confess 
under torture, the only evidence against him was his confession. There was no other evidence. Which, which I believe they, this is what they mean. They do this overseas. I saw a crazy video, and I've seen this before. It's, it's circulated on the internet a couple times. But Jake, see if you can find this. There was um, a military. I think he was an admiral or general or something during the Vietnam War. And uh, crazy story, right? Because same thing. Like he was a POW, a prisoner of war, mm -hmm. and they captured him. And he, I think he was staying at the Hanoi Hilton which was like the most famous place where they would just beat, torture, and fuck these American captives up that they, that they had found these POWs. And uh, in one of these, let's see if you can find this, Jake, the guy was being tortured and they, they sent him out, they put him in a chair with like a Thai or with a, a Vietnamese reporter and they filmed him saying that like, oh, I'm being treated really great. Uh, things here are okay, they're taking care of us, they're doing all this stuff. He's saying that to the camera, which is being played in America, right? He's oh, saying like, shit. oh, they're, they're treating me really good here. Like, things are really nice. And simultaneously, he's blinking in Morse code that they're torturing him. Yeah. They're torturing him to say this. Mm. It's fucking creepy. So he's sitting there staring at the camera like this, being like, yeah, they're treating me really good here. You know, everything's okay. Nothing's too bad. And he's blinking in Morse code that he's being tortured. Oh. It's fucking crazy. I mean, how does he even know how to do that? The, the wherewithal. He was, I think he was an admiral, and I think later he maybe oh even God. became a, a senator or a, a U.S. Jem Jemiah Denton, it says on the Wikipedia, forced to attend a press conference with a Japanese correspondent. He blinked uh, out. He Vietnamese, right? Yeah, oh. blink, blinked out a distress oh, message yeah. in Morse code at the television camera and was understood by uh, United States Naval Intelligence. Can you pull up the video? Because it just looks so creepy. This Shit. guy, I'm sure if you go to video, you'll find one. You can play it? And it's it? just oh, yeah. him blinking. Oh, it won't, it won't have the audio. It will or won't? No, it won't. Okay, that's fine. It's better if it doesn't have, then we don't get pulled yeah, from we YouTube. Yeah, we don't get pulled. I mean, look at this. This is him saying it's oh, it's good? Yeah, this is him. Look at that. Ah, uh, he's like... Yeah, I mean, you can, you can go watch the video to see. So if you're listening to this, if you're only listening to this, it's a guy who's just got the, a really tight camera picture of his thing, and he's... He's like, oh yeah, they, you know, they're treating me good here, but he's got this really, he looks like Ryan Hall. <laughs> you know how Ryan Hall's got blinky face? Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, he looks like that and he's sitting here trying to talk and he's like, yeah, things are good and he keeps blinking weird. And then they asked him later about it and he said that he was just under a lot of stress and he was blinking, but what he was actually blinking was torture oh. in, in Morse code. And the Vietnamese people didn't know that? No, they didn't know. Wow. I mean, isn't that crazy? Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. So anyway, I mean, this is, you know what you get when you're in some of these countries. <laughs> if you're, if you decide to protest, Gotta go learn caught. Morse code. <laughs> Don't ever get caught and then be tortured. Okay, so uh, I think there's one more, Jake, one more. Uh, you remember the video I think I sent you of the fucking crazy, was it Egyptian yeah, guy? Yeah, I, I was trying to find it. Oh, is he Egyptian? That, that I, I don't know if he's Egyptian it. or not. I sent it to your WhatsApp. This video has gone viral in the last couple of days. Have you seen it, Charmaine? No. Of the guy beating the shit out of this kid? No. It reminds me of the, of the, what was the gym in, in Singapore? Oh. Where they beat that kid up. The one with the female. From a few years ago. Uh, yeah, I don't want to say it because I don't want anybody to talk shit, but you guys all know what I'm talking about. If you listen to this podcast, you know that there's a, a gym in Singapore where this video went viral a couple times of just these instructors beating the shit out of this kid. Uh, yeah. And uh, that, that's what this is. So I think there was... A martial arts academy. It looked. Like, I think it was in Egypt. It looked like the script was Arabic. I'm not sure exactly. Oh yeah, you were What country me it was in? This. Yeah. And I mean, it's just this instructor beating the shit out. Of, a kid looks like he's eight years old. Mate, a like, head kicks him. Just like yeah, it's crazy. And uh, it's only been out for the like the last few days. And you what see this. What was the point of that? Like. Who knows? Was man. he trying to show him? show the eight-year-old that he was like the big boss or something? I guess. I don't know if he's trying to intimidate him. If he's trying to intimidate the people watching. But it's just, it's always a, a reminder. You know, every time I see videos like this, I'm, there's, there's always two things that I see that are recurring, right? One is like, is like uh, inappropriate behavior between the females of the gym and the head coach, which is typically a guy. And then the other thing is aggressiveness or asserting their authority, whether it's with kids or whether it's with other adults. In other words, like, being too rough with the kids, being too rough with the people that you train with, dropping people in training, punching them too hard, being too rough with the kid, like all of that stuff are just symptoms of these assholes who run and teach at these martial arts academies. And it's just another fucking example of which there are countless, countless examples of this happening. And you watch this and you're just like, damn man. Oh, it's like, looks like there's 30 kids in the class. Like, you know, the, 
No excuse for this stuff to happen. I mean, he, he like head kicks him and drops him and then he's crying and then he gets up and then he punches him again. And it's just... Does the kid ever hit him back? He's like eight, like sparring with an adult who's going way too hard. Like there's nothing he could do. Oh yeah. Like absolutely nothing he can do. No, I sent it to your WhatsApp, Jake. Yeah, sorry, I'm just trying to pull it up, but it's Instagram's just uh, uh-huh. Instagram's not playing along today, so I'm having oh, a few problems bringing stuff up. Oh, was it on there. Instagram that that video was was on? I think it was Facebook, the one I sent you. I don't know if that helps it or not. Let me try. But uh, yeah, it was Egypt. Egypt here is jujitsu, MMA, and. I think you should just keep talking. Uh, yeah, I was. You know, I was just before. Like checking you. your phone, so I, I was like, okay. No, I was trying. I was talking before you. <laughs> okay. I think you should keep on talking. Yeah, and it's just one of those things where you see all of this stuff repeat itself, repeat itself, repeat itself. I mean, Charmaine, you teach kids. Could you imagine? Could you imagine? The parents sitting there see me hit their kid like 100% even once. (laughs) Lose my job. Probably lose this gym. (laughs) I mean, I I don't know if it was 100% even, but like this kid was messed up. This kid was messed up. You don't need to hit a kid 100% to hurt them. You don't even need to hit them at all. You just need to... They, 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 they are intimidated enough as it is to be training with adults. Yeah. Like for me, it's, it's, if I'm sparring with the kids, it's difficult for even them to throw punches at me because they're often so scared, right? They're just in the shell. Because imagine, like, I'm fucking huge compared to these kids, right? Yeah, like I mean, when I'm, I'm teaching the kids or when I'm sparring with them, I'm not trying to make them feel intimidated. I'm trying to make them feel like they're comfortable uh, sparring with me. Like, I want them to hit me. I want them to be able to, like, hit me in the face, hit me in the body. You know, like, I'll be like, oh, you got me. Oh, this is good. Oh, I'm encouraging them. I'm not, like, trying to hit their head 100%, trying to knock them down. Like, that's that's not how they learn. Mm. So, yeah, I can't imagine what, what this Egyptian guy was doing to, to that eight-year-old. You know, it's just that, that thing where they want to be tough. They want to, be, they want to toughen up their kids. They want to tough. And I was... Uh, we had this, this guy, so uh, one of our students, Vlad, he has a brother, and uh, Sviat. Sviat, and he's one of our, our students here, and I, I trained with him for the, so this, this Russian kid, Vlad, comes in here and he trains every day, right, he's here literally six, seven days a week, three hours a day, every day, he wants to fight, like super, super disciplined, and uh, he's got a twin brother, he comes in and starts training, now, Vlad is a very quintessential, stereotypical Russian, he wants to go hard. He wants to go hard, always wants to train, never wants to stop. Like the workout's never hard enough. It's never intense enough. You never hit him hard enough. You never, like he's just that guy, right? And his brother is even more like that than he is. <laughs> Cause he's a, like Vlad can still be smooth. He can still like control. Brother's a little bit uh, less experienced. So he wants to bro down a little bit more, right? He wants to throw hard. He wants to get crazy. He wants to do. He's he like, wants coach, you to hit him I want harder. you to hit me hard. Yeah, so I want can, you to hit me hard, coach. Yeah, so he hit comes, me hard. Hit he me hard, in, please. <laughs> he comes in last week. First time I ever met him, by the way. So it's like the first day I ever met him. He comes in and he's like, oh, coach, you know, I have a exam for the police academy in Russia next. I think he said April or or June or something like that. And I was like, okay, cool. And he's like, you know, when you do this, it's like three minutes uh, striking, three minutes grappling, three minutes on the ground, ground and pound. They rotate fresh people on you. This is like a police exam, right? And he's like, man, they go hard. They beat the shit out of you. They don't care what your T goes. They don't care what your technique is. They just want to see your heart. (laughs) And so I was like, okay. (laughs) And then I started sparring with him. And, you know, like, I'm just touching him, right? I'm picking him apart. I'm like, death by a thousand cuts, right? Every time he moves, he's getting touched a little bit. Pop, pop, pop. Just touching him, touching him. And then uh, at the end of the round, he goes, uh, he looks at me and he's like, coach, next time, you must go harder. You must go harder. You must go harder. And I look at him, I'm like, I don't want to go harder, dude. Like, I don't want to go harder than that. I was like, I don't want to hit you harder. I need your defense to be better. Yeah, me and Kezia was sitting there and you guys are just sparring and he was like telling you, oh, you, 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 coach, please hit me harder next time. Please hit me harder. And then we're both just like looking at each other like, what the fuck is wrong with this Because I wasn't like not hitting him. I was still hitting him decent. And then he's just like, hit me harder, hit me harder. Because he's like, they're just going to hit, they're just going to try to hurt me. It's not about this. And I'm like, it is about that. Because... I'm not trying to see how tough you, I have no doubt you're tough. You're a fucking Russian savage, like, you're tough. The most important thing, if these people are trying to fuck you up, is to not let the shots land. They bounce off the forearms, they bounce off the glove, they bounce off the elbows, they bounce off the body. You be smart, not you like You can tough. take a lot of shots if you're blocking them. I don't care how tough you are, if you get hit clean, you're fucked. It's like, so I told him, I was like, I don't want you to be a tough guy. I want you to have good defense then when they do land, the good shots do land and your toughness is required, it will be there. 
but nobody's tougher than constant unrelenting shots that are landing like people will drop i don't care who you are nobody's tougher than like clean shots landing and then i sparred with them a couple days ago like we just touched sparring right we're not clinching we're it not was grappling yeah. and uh you know i was going harder on him this time but he was doing better too his defense was up he was just tired so i kept hitting him in the body kept hitting him in the body liver shot solar plexus shot body kick body kick because i'm not trying to hurt i dump him and then when i dumped him and he's trying to stand up i'm just kind of like pushing him with my foot making him flop over and then like hitting him with so i'm just torturing him a little bit all right right which is what he wanted and then the reason i know he wanted this because as soon as i was done he's just like coach and he gives me this big fucking hug he's like yes <laughs> thank next you time we do thank more you, of that coach. and i'm like look at him i'm like you're fucking crazy man like you are absolutely crazy out of, out of Love Russia. It's a very different mentality. <laughs> yes. It's a very different mentality. And I just can't only think about like him and his brother growing up with the fights they they're twin brothers. Twin yeah. Russian brothers who they're are both crime, super intense. Crimea, is it? Uh Crimea. Yeah. yeah, that's where they're from. Alright. Anyway, segueing back to this Egyptian guy. Did you manage to find it? No, I'm sorry, I just You haven't found no. it. Okay, anyway, you guys you guys can find this video. It's uh it's it's gone pretty viral. You can't, you can't get it on somewhere. Facebook. No, sorry, I'm, I'm searching up every term I can think of. And okay. I just can't get it. Okay, no stress. Uh, you, got, you guys can find it. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll put a link to it or something so you guys can see. I'm sure you guys have all have all seen it before. It went pretty viral in Singapore. The point is, don't be an asshole. When you teach kids, you have to understand that they're impressionable and they're young, and they are much more vulnerable and frightened than you can possibly imagine as a grown-ass adult who's a trained martial artist. Like, you can't relate... Sometimes it makes me think of jujitsu, right? I remember one time I was rolling with uh, uh, Bruno Cunha, who's the head coach at New Fit, and uh, he's the head coach of the GF team in Singapore, and he, he's one of my old coaches. And uh, I remember one time he, 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 we were rolling, and you know, at that time I was like a four stripe brown belt, and he's a black belt, so like those rolls are pretty tough, right? I'm not getting brown belts and black belts aren't getting like flow rolls. Right? You train with the Brazilians, you're, you're having a tough roll no matter what. And, and I knew that, right? But this particular day, we were doing a flow roll. Jake McKenzie was teaching the class. And, uh, you know, we're just drilling techniques. Because Jake was like, we're going to float. We just do something or whatever. And uh, I remember one time, he, he, we were just sitting there. And I'm playing my guard. And I'm kind of flopping around and inverting. And we're just experimenting, right? And uh, can you get two more, Charmaine? Or three more? Yes. And uh, so we're sitting there. We're playing around. I'm inverting. I'm fucking around. Nothing too serious, right? And then while I'm doing it, I, so like my guard is around him right he turns around and puts a toe hold on my leg so fast and it's like pop and it fucking popped my knee bad like popped my knee during a fl like we're just fucking around right and i was like oh shit i couldn't i couldn't bend my knee i couldn't stretch it. it it was clicking and i just was like damn man like we're going we're flow rolling why would you explode that quickly and i mean i didn't know i know he didn't do it on purpose yeah he was just like oh i'm gonna do it quickly and maybe he had a better bite than he thought he did and my knee ended up popping and he was really sorry he's like oh shit oh shit oh shit you know, and then uh, in the same roll, like uh, the next time I rolled with him, we started to actually do a real roll. And I remember he hit me with an arm bar that was so fast. I, it was one of those ones where I think it was like shin behind the neck, you know, where you have to do the front roll. And I have both my hands clasped like this. So that way he can't pull my yeah. grip apart. And I'm on my fucking head because I'm doing like a front roll. If I let go of my, he's pulling so hard on the arm that if I let go of my grip, boom, that's gonna hyperextend. Like my elbow's gonna hyperextend so fast because he's pulling so hard that I have to squeeze my hand so hard and I'm in the middle of like flipping on my, so there's so much going on, right? <laughs> And then while I'm in the process of, of rolling on my head, my grip slips. And because he was putting so much pressure on it, boom, my fucking elbow hyperextended so bad. And I was just laying there like, ah, oh, fuck. Like I couldn't, I couldn't curl my arm. And then, <laughs> you know, and, and this is no disrespect to Bruno. Bruno's one of the sweetest people I know, right? This, this is just rolling and shit happens when you roll. And especially when you roll at the higher level, like I'm not a bitch. This is just part of the thing. It comes with it. I'm just telling a story. Right. Yeah. And uh, and I did that, and I remember, like, I'm wall, I'm rolling around, I'm like, oh fuck, I can't straighten my arm. And I look over at him, and he's just kind of like, tying his belt, stretching a little bit, looking around, making sure everything's good. And I'm just like flopping around on the fucking fucking elbows, hanging out. And and what it made me realize was that, and I'm tying this back to this this guy that was teaching, when you've trained for so long and you're a black belt of of, of so many years, injuries, same thing when you're a Muay Thai coach. You, you ding your shin from a kick, you catch a knee, you catch an elbow, you armbar somebody too much, you rear naked choke them too hard, you crank their neck a little bit, they're like, fuck. You see it so often that you get very desensitized to it. So you get desensitized to the injuries because yeah. it, it's just a common part of the sport, right? You, you can't help it. 
So you see them so much more frequently than other people. And I remember just having this surreal moment where I'm like, dude, my knees fucked, my arms fucked, all from like just five minutes of rolling or whatever it was with this coach. And then he's kind of, uh, you know, numb to it or immune to it. And I was fine. So yeah. he, I'm not saying that he had no right to be like that. I don't want him to be like, oh, are you okay, Precious? Like, that's not what I'm trying to say. I'm just trying to say that there's something that happens when you train for so many years where you get desensitized to what it feels like to be fucked up. Like if you're a, br a black belt, 10, 15 years, you can't really remember what it's like to be the white belt walking into the gym that's afraid to roll, that's afraid to train with people, that is going through the anxiety and the stress. Like if you're a, a Muay Thai coach or a kickboxing coach like me too, and people spar for the first time, it's you forget the nerves and the anxiety that you can get when you're staring across somebody who's about to punch you because you're not used to it. And so I think the thing with like a lot of these coaches who sometimes get too rough with their students and all this kind of stuff, they've just been in the game so long and they're trying to toughen up the students that they lose sight of what it was like when they were beginners. Yeah. They forget that feeling yeah. of the fear, the anxiety, the stress. To them it's just so normal that I think that they get a little detached and they have find it hard to relate to and I think it's important for all coaches to remember what it's like to be that beginner. That white belt two stripe that's like stressed out. That, that, you know, I've been that guy that's like, you're on the way to the gym and you're like thinking about going home when you're already on the way because you're like, fuck this, man. I don't want to go. I'm gonna, I had a long day. Like, my fucking wife is pissed at me. I got kids coming home. I don't want to come here and get strangled, get kicked in the stomach. Like, they forget what that feeling is like. Yeah. And you have to remember that. It's, it's part of being a human and having like a little bit of empathy for your beginners. You have to, it's important for coaches to remember that uh, toughness is something. You know that fucking thing that I hate? That hyperfly shit you can't teach heart? I hate that shit. Why, why, why? Cause you 100% can teach heart. <laughs> you can't teach heart. This is just like, oh, let's find a, let's find a platitude that, uh, oh, I think Charmaine's camera's gone. They're like, oh, let's find a, a platitude where we can just, say some bullshit that people will hype behind and then I'm gonna pull out my gi and it's gonna be like, can't teach heart. <laughs> it's the dumbest shit ever. Of course you can teach heart. What do you mean? But they're just trying to say like, you know, if you have the heart to go Is learn jujitsu, yeah, it's... Okay. Keep going, keep going. It, oh, I, I forgot what I was trying to say. <laughs> go, go, go sit next to Luke and then we've got you both in shot. Okay. Okay. So the camera died, so we're gonna finish up with Tana. Okay, this, this will now make my life significantly easier. Yeah, don't have to so much. But yeah, that, that tan, can't teach heart shit, I hate that. Of course you can. Yeah. I used to be a bitch, dude. When I was like young, I was afraid of everything. Like I was afraid But you of... still got the heart in you. No, that's horse shit. <laughs> this is what I was trying to tell Vlad, cause, or uh, Siri, because he was like, oh, they don't care about my Sviat, defense. Sviat. Sviat, Sviat, sorry. He's like, yeah, they don't care about my defense. They, they just want to know my heart. And yeah. I'm like, I don't care. Everybody will crumble if your cardio is gone. Yeah. You hit someone in the face, they're going down. I don't care what their heart is. You hit somebody with a liver shot, a body shot, hard body shot. There's no amount of heart that can get you through that. Technique can get you through that. Solid Dude, defense can get you through that. On, on the uh, on the one FC card this weekend, to, to prove that you know heart will fail eventually. You know, two pro MMA fighters and one of the fights, someone got cracked with a body shot, and it was one of those slow reactions where they stood there, and then it takes about three seconds. They just went, oh fuck this. <laughs> just went yeah, down. just just went down and like yeah, all the heart in the world was not keeping him yeah, on his feet. Like, that's why this thing is bullshit. There is no skill or no quality that you can have as a human that you cannot teach, or that you everything is teachable. Oh, everything is teachable. One hundred percent. Like I, I don't teach MMA, but I teach and I teach music. Like you can teach grit. The secret to it is you just keep on showing up, even though you don't like it but you'll find something funny in it. And then it goes to what you said about the coach thinking about it. Because, you know, I, I come down here and some days I'm knackered and stuff like that, but you're never like, oh, you've got to do 100 push-ups and you've got to do 100 crunches and then you've got to roll. And I'm like, well, I'm not, I'm not a pro MMA fighter. <laughs> you know, work on your technique. Well, it's like your daughter, maybe she doesn't like doing the push kicks and drills and stuff, but she just push kicked a boy <laughs> out of the trampoline. I, like, <laughs> she, they, like my, like my daughter, daughter's got my heart sort of thing. Like she, uh, but yeah, she just, she comes down three times a week. She doesn't come down because she's brave and she wants to be a warrior. She comes down because she loves training. But ten years from now, twenty years from now. People look at me like, well, she is a bad motherfucker. 
Yeah, for sure. I mean, compared yeah, to yeah. people her age and her, of course, yeah, this idea that you can't teach heart is nonsense. There's two things that I hate. I hate people that say that you can't teach heart. And then I hate when people talk about talent, 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 talent is fucking horse shit. You know how many times I've seen people that say, oh, you're really talented or someone's kids or whatever. You're really talented. You're really talented. The only thing that equals is how much time have you spent doing that activity? Yep. I'm not saying that there's not like some people have a, a natural skill that is greater or lesser than other people, right? Like I'm not, I don't have John Jones talent, Yeah. but I can still be damn good at fighting. Yep. Right. It doesn't mean I'm not. I'm not like I don't have John Jones talent. Yeah, the yeah. best in the world. But there's no fucking. But you can get really fucking good. Yeah. Still, it's like you can still get for all practical purposes, right? You can still. I might not be Jimi Hendrix, but if I play the guitar enough, I can get adequately really good. Yeah. Even if I'm not the most musically talented person ever. I hate that fucking word. I hate but, talent. I hate heart. That's to, bullshit. Yeah. To, to a you know to a white belt is new to the gym as far as they're concerned like a blue belt is the most talented yes, <laughs> MMA. They, they think that MMA. they just have more skill than you like they're just better than me they're just better like they're yeah. naturally just better it's and, and, and it's not it's they you know they've shown up consistently two three times a week for two three years and you know, that's that's all there is to it now then obviously the guy who's the blue belt who's winning you know the tournaments and stuff like that yeah, he's got a level of talent that perhaps not well. Obviously, they're not every blue belt possesses. But as far as that white belt's concerned, every blue belt's got that level of talent. Yeah, I used to always hear this. Uh, this is a common thing for my wrestlers out there listening. Is that uh, I always used to hear this when I first started BJJ. They'd always be like, "Oh, you're so strong. You're so strong. You're so strong." Like wrestlers are so strong. They're so strong, and explosive. I would just hear this over and over and over and over. And I'd, and I'd always be like, no, it's not strength that you're feeling. It feels like strength. Like when you're receiving it, it feels like that strength. But what that really is is technique. Because what I understand is a much, and it's not even intellectual, right? Like I can't, in the time, if I'm taking somebody down, if I'm sprawling, if I'm trying to get up, if I'm trying to ride somebody, I'm not thinking about it. My body just knows how to manipulate the body in a much more micro level than the person that I'm training with. When you're doing that, it feels like strength. Like if uh, you know Charmaine's trying to stand up from a turtle and I drag her back down and she tries and I drag and I keep just dragging her down. If I'm doing that to somebody that I train, it feels like I'm ragdolling them, right? So they're like, Dad, you just keep slamming me down, you keep slamming up, but really I know how to off balance you. Yeah. Right? I'm not even necessarily using a lot of strength. And when you do that, it feels like, but really what that is is it's like very subtle manipulation of the body that feels like strength. And that's not and strength is something that another people also think is like, you have it or you don't. Of course you can build it, right? And just like any other discipline, some people have a genetic propensity to be better at it than others, but it doesn't mean you can't dramatically increase your strength no matter who you are and be vastly stronger than most people. Maybe you're not gonna be fucking, what's the, Eddie Hall or whatever the hell yeah. his name, right? You're not gonna be him. Yeah. But you can be stronger than 99% of the people walking the street. And so for all of you BJJ, blue belts, white belts that think that you don't have the talent, you don't have this, you don't have that, what's your goal? Do you wanna, do you wanna beat Gordon Ryan? Well, well, maybe you don't have that kind of talent. But do you wanna be prepared if somebody snatches up your fucking baby in South Africa? Do you wanna be prepared if like, you, know, you have some situation, some uh, self-defense situation with a regular person in the street? Yep. Everybody can get to the point where they can neutralize 99.8% yeah. of but, issues that they would deal with with most people. Yeah. You, you run into Gordon Ryan, don't pick a fight with him. <laughs> But every other fucking person that you get, you get a purple belt, you get a, a blue belt, a brown belt in jiu-jitsu, you're going to be able to deal with that situation regardless of their talent or yours. Even in like, if, you know, firstly, if you're picking a fight and the other person steps back into some sort of fighting stance, that's not for you. Yeah. Yeah. Run, away. Yeah, run away. If they've got cauliflower ear, run, run away. away. If, if they're just stood there, both legs together, grinning gormlessly, just a quick take down. If they have a knife and they hold it like this, run away. If they hold it like this, you probably stand a chance, but if they actually know how to hold a knife like that, run away. Because run away and run. Stab, stab. No, because that's how you're supposed to hold it. Because you can punch, you can block with it, you can stab, you can yeah. slash. Oh, I didn't you're know not that. supposed to hold it like this. So how do you? How do you? You just turn your head. And yeah, you can slash, you can stab, you can defend with it, you could come down with it. 
It's supposed to go down the side of your forearm. Like I guess I'm a noob then because I would be holding it like this. Charmaine's like, give me your money. <laughs> give me your fucking stack. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't do that, just Charmaine, you, you're a very good purple belt, just take him down and choke <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Because if you think about it, you can even like, you can even box Muay Thai with a knife just just right there, right? Just hanging out the side, you could throw some punches, you could do... Makes sense, do makes thing. sense. Anyway, uh, How do we even get to this topic? <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. Just talking about stabbing people. Uh, Alright man, I guess that, that's pretty much it. We covered all the fights next weekend, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, we went through the full card, so... Cool. I so, can't remember what our picks were, so... So next week, uh, I think. So next week, I think is the one year anniversary of the podcast. One year, uh, I think Greg, the guy that I had on episode one, he's gonna come back, and then he's not a brewer anymore. He's a he's a furniture maker. Furniture maker. I mean, he still brews and shit, but yeah, he's he's changed jobs. So we'll we'll have him on. We'll talk some shit, and then the weekend after that, we have Yang on from Equilibrium. Yeah, Equilibrium. Right. right so we got the owner of uh, Equilibrium. He's gonna come on in and uh, do the podcast. And then after that, I'm going to get some old podcasts lined up that we had some issues with. So i uh, got a good, bunch of good content coming for you guys. Please make sure, everybody, that you check out the YouTube version of the podcast. If you're listening to it on uh, the podcast apps and stuff, I appreciate that. But uh, we're, rec- we're rocking some new technology where we can pull the videos up and all that kind of stuff. I think, so, I, oh my God, I think my camera's just died. All right. Well, on that note, we are going to finish come, up. Come here, no, come here and finish on this one. Come around, huh? come around. Oh, it was, it was. That's okay. It, we just. No, no, no. Come, come, come. Okay. I'm gonna run around. We'll do all three of us in shot. This, this is. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, <laughs> this is the Stronghold Podcast, everybody. Thank you for listening. Have a good night and cheers.